All right, have you ever thought about how often we actually eat? I mean, for most of us, it's three times a day, and for people uh, who are crazy about food like I am, it's more like a constant flow of, of yummy goodness. Now, um, whatever your regularity is, you have to admit that it's something that conjoins all humans together. It doesn't matter what your race is, your background, your political affiliation, we all have to eat to survive, right? Um, and I guess what's lucky for us is that we've taken, as humans, this basic survival instinct and made it into something really fun and pretty exciting. Now, I love food because it tastes good, um, but there are three reasons that I particularly like food. And first is that basically there's this infinite number of ways you can put ingredients and flavors together and make lots and lots and lots of yummy things. Infinite number. And that really, really excites me because you never get bored. But secondly... It is that drinking and eating can actually be a full sensory experience. So if we take the example of drinking wine, some people might think that drinking wine is a pretty simple act. You drink the liquid, you get slightly intoxicated, it's fun, and that's the end of it. But I think it's more than that. I think it's full sensory. And the reason I say that is you see the bottle of wine, so then you're stimulating your sense of sight. You grab the bottle of wine and pour it into your glass, and then you're stimulating your sense of touch. You then take the glass, swirl it around, and put it up to your nose, and then you're stimulating your sense of smell. And then, of course, when you bring the glass up to your lips and drink the liquid, you're stimulating your sense of taste. 100% right there. Um, and then what about hearing, you say? Well, we clink glasses, right, when we say cheers. So then you hear the meeting of the glass and the ring, and then you're stimulating your sense of Hearing, yeah, right, which I think is pretty awesome that food and drinking, the experience can be full sensory. But what's more than that even is that some food have, well, different foods have different effects in our bodies. So the example um, is spicy food. Who likes spicy food? Yeah, all of you, I'm sure. Um, well, did you know that chili has a substance? Basically, when you consume it, it... Um, it makes all your uh, pain messengers release. It's called substance P, and it basically makes all of it release to the point that there's none left. And so your body's nervous system can't recognize pain anymore. So what it actually does is it numbs pain, obviously temporarily, but it, it does numb it. Um, so, you know, why not eat spicy food instead of taking a painkiller? And the other cool example is honey. Honey is a natural cure for hangovers because it has this mix of sugars, which basically speeds up the oxidation of alcohol by the liver. Um, so it's like a sobering agent. So uh, the next time you get hungover, try it out. And it also has um, antibacterial properties. So it boosts your immune system. Um, what's the other thing it does? Uh, oh, it soothes your throat, which obviously helps if, been, if you've been screaming in a club the night before. So obviously we recognize that feeding our bodies on a daily basis is really important because our bodies are our physical instruments. It's what makes us tangibly human beings. But remember what Descartes said, I think, therefore I am. And so if thinking is a fundamental part of what makes us human beings, then should we also be feeding our minds in the same way that we feed our bodies? I mean, logically, if you think about it, we if we don't feed our bodies, then eventually our bodies stop working. So if we don't feed our minds, do our minds stop working? I think so. And so the way I think about it is there's a way that you can feed your mind through mind food. And the way I like to do it is by consuming quotes. Because when I think about or ponder about a quote, it stimulates my mind, and in doing so, I feed it. Um, so I encourage you to also think about the different ways that you might be able to incorporate some mind food into your regular diet. And then as I was um, feeding my mind, funnily enough, I started thinking more. And when I did so, I, I remembered this quote by Mahatma Gandhi, and he says, as a rule, the mind residing in a weak body is also weak, and where there is no strength of mind, there can be no strength of soul. And so then I was like, hang on a second. Does your soul also have to be fed? Because if soul is part of what makes us human as well, then what about that? And then if we do have to feed our soul, how in the world do we feed it? What is soul food? So I pondered it a little bit, and then I, I found that there is actually this magical source of soul food, for me anyway, which with only one mere melody can transport me to a childhood memory as if I'm there, or make me feel the pain of a thousand broken hearts, or feel the hope and joy of a generation, or even make me feel like I'm in love, and that to me is music. I think music is food for the soul. 
So what I basically decided at the end of this food epiphany is that it is equally as important for us to feed our bodies uh, with food, our minds with quotes, and our souls with music. And what came out of this is this thing called Gracie in the Kitchen, oh, just, just gone, because um, I'm over time, um, which is an online cooking show with a bit of a twist. So together with Alex, who's here, and Drew, who also works with us from Cracked Aperture, we're making this online uh, cooking show <laughs> that basically takes uh, the concept that I've talked about and makes it into episodes. So I hope you can visit graceinthekitchen.com uh, and let's start living to eat. Thank you.